Do you find that you only get finished with your home projects when you're ready to sell it? I found some great ways to get motivated and finish my condo projects while I actually live here. Let me tell you my story. I'm Doug Walker, and this is Roominess. Roominess brings you straightforward steps to an inviting home. Click the subscribe button for more bite-sized decor advice. You can find newsletters, freebies, and ebooks over on my website. At the end of the video, I'll have bonus tips on furniture selection for better functionality. Recently, we talked about my decision to move and the renovation of my bathroom and kitchen. But that didn't really finish the condo. To do that, I wanted to create storage space for my books and display space for my art. I wanted to put down rugs for warmth, color, and space definition. I wanted to get a new dining table to double as a desk. I needed to install a closet system. I wanted to put up window shades and curtains. I had to hang up all my art. And, oh by the way, I wanted to get a piano. You've probably experienced this. We all have grand plans of how we want to finish our new house, but a move or renovation can be so exhausting that we look at another list of things to do and think, oh, I'll get to it someday. I don't have to do it right now. Smaller projects can be tricky that way. It's easy to put them off until next week. But as you know, next week can easily turn into two years or more. We think of them as decor issues, but the real problem is overcoming resistance, finding motivation, and just getting started with them. In my case, I had already set a budget that I could live with. This is one way to motivate yourself. Settle on a budget first and take financial stress out of the equation. You may have to do some research and pricing to get to that point. My first step was to set a deadline. In February of that year, I invited my family over for Christmas breakfast that December. You can't have family over for a sit-down meal and not be done with your house. I needed a dining table and a piano for my event. And I couldn't have a piano until I had the rugs down. And if I wasn't going to have stacks of boxes and books, I had to have the bookshelves. So the race was on to get everything finished. If I didn't, I'd have to sheepishly ask someone else to host at the last minute. At the end of renovating, I was still living out of makeshift clothing storage. So the next step was the closet project. I talked to a few closet system installers and found one that was reasonably priced. One of the big obstacles of having something installed is just the inconvenience of time. You have to schedule it and then work around your job and other commitments. It's a little easier now with more remote work options available. But just deciding to pick up the phone and call somebody, that gets the ball rolling and the rest is follow through. The shelves are an inexpensive laminate rather than wood. They coordinate well with the bathroom and they have the kind of extras I was looking for, such as tie racks, a belt rack, and a valet bar. It supports itself entirely off the wall so I can sweep and mop underneath of it. I arrange the adjustable shelves to keep one shelf as strictly decorative because, you know, me. Who knows you? I'm confused. Next up was window coverings. Most of us end up using blinds of some kind on the window, and I did the same. My easy out for motivation on getting blinds was to buy solar shades from a friend of mine. As soon as we started talking about it, I felt obligated to move the process along. If you're going to use solid color shades like I did, your best bet is probably to match your shades and trim color. A bigger hang-up for me was accenting the windows at the end wall of the condo where the main view is. A lot of us stop when we have blinds for light control. Curtains can seem unnecessary, but they have the potential for having a huge impact on our rooms with color, pattern, and texture that draws our eye up to the ceiling. As the condos are divided in my building, the original window is actually off-center in the space. Blasphemy! I didn't want anything frilly or formal on the windows. I decided on a pair of neutral shears on swing arm rods. I can adjust the positions of each curtain independently and intentionally have them asymmetrical to work with the asymmetry of the window. For the curtains, I told a trusted friend that I was going to have them made and I would send photos when they were installed. That's another great motivator. I bought the dining table next. Most of the time the dining table is my desk. My looming deadline forced me to throw in the towel on finding an existing table that fit my needs and just have one made. I got to control all the details I wanted that way. The finish and style, rounded edges on the tabletop, and well-padded seats. If you're enjoying this video, 
click the thumbs up button. It'll help more people find Roominess. If you're not enjoying this video, it's not going to get any better. You better bail now. The bookshelves would have to do a lot of heavy lifting in the room, so I took time to design them to fit in everything and create a look I would like. I was inspired by the efficient storage that you see in Japanese and Scandinavian design, creating cubbies for everything. Mine included a wine rack, office storage, china storage, bookshelves, display shelves, an electric fireplace, and a TV. An obstacle to getting started was fear that I hadn't thought of everything. It was helpful to sit down with a custom cabinet designer, go over the whole design, and feel comfortable that everything was covered. The shelves were expensive, but in this case, similar to the closet, I could consider it an investment in the condo. Nice rationalization. I wanted fairly sizable rugs in my rooms for warmth and to reduce echoes. I also wanted to reuse patterned rugs that I already owned. So I found a low pile carpet and took it to a carpet binding service. I might have skipped this project altogether because I was venturing into unknown territory, but again, I told a friend I would do it and that I would send pictures. Having carpet bound turned out not to be as expensive as I thought it would be, and laying down the rugs made a huge difference in the space. Later in the year, I scheduled a whole day to hang up art. This is really a simple project and just requires the courage to put nails in the walls and trust that you have the right spot. Click the video link above to see my technique for testing wall art locations before you put nails in the walls. Make it in a single day project gave me a lot of motivation, and I invited a friend over to help with pieces that needed a ladder and two people. The last decor project was the piano. I had to make sure it could be carried all the way up to the condo. There's no elevator in the building. I almost stopped when I couldn't find a used piano that would fit. Only a more expensive new piano was available in the right size at the time that I needed it. I had saved enough money on other projects to make it feasible. I took a day to consider whether I was good with the decision, then I went ahead with it. I was surprisingly unworried at the time, but in retrospect, all this work cut it very close. I started shopping for a piano in October, but we couldn't get the delivery scheduled until December 18th. I was ready for Christmas with only one week to spare. What I learned is that finishing decor projects is just like anything else we want to accomplish. We need to find the motivation or make something up. Like give yourself a deadline, make commitments to trusted friends, or schedule a whole day. Here are some bonus tips about furniture selection. I mentioned rounding the corners of my dining table. When I use it as a desk, I want to be comfortable while typing and not have a sharp corner. I had the chairs well padded so they aren't uncomfortable if I sit in one all day. Personally, I avoid chairs with arms for desks or dining tables. You can easily catch your hand on the table while pulling chair forward, especially if there are hidden aprons or drawers underneath. If you want your furniture to be multifunctional, such as a dining table that can double as a desk, an ottoman you can use for seating or as a coffee table, or just a kitchen counter that's used for homework, then you need a place to stow away the accessories that go with those functions. For instance, I need a place to put my computer when my desk becomes a dining table. I planned that into my bookshelf design. Here's another roominess video that you might like. You should watch. It's short. I'll see you there.